So good afternoon, everybody. I am Garima Jain, and I've been working as an Android developer since past three years. Currently, I'm working with the company named as Fueled, and uh, we have developed and worked with a lot of clients, which are some are startups, some are well established, and some of them are like Quizup, Rite Aid Pharmacy, Barneys New York, Barnes and Noble College, Wok, Piso, and so it's a service-based company. and we get to try a lot of different technologies and new stuff and from past two years i would say we have been like uh, really delving deep into uh, reactive and ra java and trying to use trying to use it in almost all of our apps and also uh, it's one of the libraries that we make sure to use in all the apps that we write So uh, that is why my talk is on R S Java. It's called R X F I, which is a simple spell for complex R S Java operators. So who is this talk for? People who are already working on R S Java, you might find that there is more to learn by this talk. And uh, people who are beginners, I would say that this is high time you start R X F I in your apps because it's highly useful and it has a lot of advantages and it makes things easier which i'm going to talk about in the presentation and for all the pros out there just attend sit and relax the talk is going to be fun so what is this talk about it's about rxify so uh, how many of you like rx java how many of you don't know about rx java okay how many of you like harry potter okay so uh, in this talk i might use a little of harry potter references but i'll make sure not to overuse them so rxify it terms uh, the use of rx java or uh, use of the operators which comes along with rx java and i'm going to focus on rx java making our life simpler instead of like uh, disturbing us a lot and uh, i would say that what we need to do is we just need to cast a little spell that is use any operator and we're good to go perform any task and it will be really easy so what is rx java rx java is reactive extensions for jvm java virtual machine and rx java mainly works on the observer pattern that is for uh, emitting sequences and data and events i'll talk about the observer pattern not much in detail uh, as uh, i'll just show a little uh, introduction about it so how rx java is making our life simpler by using rx java we do not have to worry about things like low level threading synchronization background processing exponential backoffs retrying repeating and things like that Uh, when you code it without RX Java, you might have to use a lot of variables and a lot of stuff. You'd have to use a lot of your head, and if you just use RX Java, it will be less error prone. So why am I giving this talk? So RX Java and the RX Java operators, uh, to some people, it might seem a little overwhelming in the beginning, and they might get a little uh, confused. because rx java and its operators might be complex at first and it might be hard to understand and some of the marble diagrams of the operators they're a little too much so what i'm suggesting is start rxifying your apps because as you might have uh, heard about the android podcast fragmented podcast uh, kaushik gopal and don filker kaushik gopal recently interviewed many uh, renowned developers in the android community in the google io 2016 and most of them the top 3 apps they told us about that they using is rx java retrofit and dagger so start rxifying your apps so let me go over the basics we have three things three main things observable subscriber and actions observable is like anything that is producing a stream of events emitting items subscriber consumes those items and actions are whenever any item is emitted in a stream on next is called and which is followed by on complete if everything goes well and if god forbid you get an error on error is called it can get called even without on next being called 
or it can get called after some series of events have been emitted. So between producer and consumer, that is observable, and your subscriber, we have some operators that can modify your data. And we have different schedulers, and schedulers are uh, your really good friend because they think, make things easier. We have the main thread from, uh, for Android. We have the computation thread, that is the background thread. And uh, there is also a test scheduler, which makes testing easier. So this is a basic observable pattern. We have a producer on one end, and we have a consumer on the other end. The producer is emitting items, that is A, B, and C, the consumer or the subscriber is consuming items. This is a simple observable pattern which on which Rx Java works or the reactor programming works. So let's create a simple observable now. We have a string called hello world. We're going to use the justify spell on it or you can call it the just operator. From this we'll get the observable string. So this is a basic Marvel diagram which shows time on the x-axis and one item is getting emitted, that is a string, hello world, by just using a just operator. So next we have an array of strings. We're going to use the from operator here, or in array Java 2, which is now new, you can like use from iterable or oh, from list, whichever is applicable. And we get another stream of strings like A, B, and C. Let's take a look at some uh, spells or operators we, which you should know of. First is a MapPO operator or the map, widely known as map. So what map does is it transforms every item of a collection of items. It applies a function to each and every item. If I talk technically, it transforms the items emitted by an observable by applying a function to each item. So this is a simple example. We have an observable of integers emitting 1, 2, and 3. We want to apply a map operator on it. So it's a MapPO spell we can apply. On 1, we can multiply it by 10. On 2, we can multiply it by 10. So the function is going to be multiplied by 10. Let's see how we can do that. So this is a simple code snippet. We are first creating an observable from these three integers. Where then we are applying the map function. And we are supplying it a function that how do we want to modify the stream. So here simply we are multiplying it by 10. So we get 10, 20, and 30 as a stream. So in Rx Java, the func1 thing you just saw, this func1 which we are supplying as an argument, it has changed to function. And there is also something called func2, which takes two inputs. It has become by function. So you see by function as well. So this is what it, it has become. So you don't really need to worry about all this because Android Studio and everything, it gets auto-generated. But still, it's good to know that function is when we have only one input and we're multiplying it by 10. So next is the flat map PM spell or the flat map operator. What flat map does is, as we saw just now, map was converting one item into another item. What Flat map does is it takes one item and it converts it into more than one item, like any list of items. Then what it does is it combines those items into stream. So technically speaking, transform the items emitted by an observable into observables, then flatten the emissions from those into a single observable. Let's see by an example. So these, uh, this is a simple observable which is emitting hello world and how are you. Hello world is getting converted into hello and world. How are you is getting converted into how and r and u. Then it is getting combined into another stream. That is what flat map does. So this is how we can do that. We'll again apply a function to it. And here I'm just splitting it. Yeah, the main thing to uh, remember is that flat map returns an observable and a map returns uh, the type of uh, whichever uh, data type you are passing to it. Why we're returning an observable here? Because from one item, we want to emit more than one item, and observable itself emits more than one item. So next is the filterum spell, or the filter operator. As the name suggests, we have a collection of items. It filters those collections based on some condition. 
so technically we are going to emit only those items from an observable that pass up predicate test so here we have an observable of integers from 1 to 7 what we want to do is we want to filter out only the odd numbers so we're going to apply the filter um spell over it so uh, we're going to So we're going to uh, pass a function to it that is percentile 2 equal to 1 and it will just filter out the odd numbers for us. So let's take a look at the some complex spells which are doing all the magic out there. Complex operators. First one is the Zipiosa spell or the zip operator. What zip operator does is it combines multiple uh, collection together according to some function and then emits the result of the combination. For example, if you are getting something from the from one API call and you are getting something else from another API call, then you want to get those two results and you want to create another object from those two results. That is what zip will do. Technically, combine the emissions of multiple observables together via specified function and emit single items for each combination based on the results of this function. So this is the marble diagram for zip. We have different observable streams it takes one item out of this each and every stream and then it converts into a different stream. Yes, it looks a little overwhelming at the beginning. So instead, just we'll uh, take an example. We will take a fictional example that uh, is we want to create a polyjuice potion and Hermione wants to prepare this potion. She is waiting for the task Ron to bring her, bring her flux sweet, which is an ingredient of the polyjuice potion. She is waiting for task Harry to bring her hair, that is uh, hair of some person, which is also an ingredient of the polyjuice potion. So both tasks, Ron, R and H are executing asynchronously and only after Ron, R and H have executed, then we can uh, start preparing the polyjuice potion. So here is the marble diagram for this problem. One observable is emitting flux feed, one another observable is emitting crab hair. And then we want to combine these two after both of these operations or tasks have completed and we want to create a polyjuice portion. What we can do is we can simply apply the Zipiosa spell over it. This is the zip operator. This is the static function of the observable class. We'll give it the flux feed observable. We'll give it the hair observable. And here we'll use the by function because the input is two, uh, two objects and we are converting into a polyjuice. So can you relate this polyjuice problem to any coding problem? Yes, when multiple API calls are executing simultaneously, then you can uh, use this problem to uh, do some things I am going to demo about it, do a demo about it. So let's take a look at the uh, other spells, concatify, that is a concat operator and merge use, that is the merge operator. First, take, uh, let's take a look at the technical definition, definitions of these two. What concat operator does is it emits the emissions from two or more observables without interleaving them. And merge, it combines multiple observables into one by merging their emissions. So the thing is, concat can interleave and merge operator, it cannot interleave. Concat and merge, they both have the similarity that they both will uh, combine similar type of data that is uh, an observable having same types and uh, that is the same thing with merge. So let's take an example. We have two streams, sorry, two streams emitting four, uh, uh, in, two streams emitting integers, one, two, three and four and eight and nine. We apply the concatify operator on it and as you can see, it will first emit all the items from the first stream and then it will emit the second stream. Whereas merge will emit as in one when the items will come. So one is getting emitted, then as eight is get, uh, coming, so eight is getting emitted and then two and then so on. So uh, what was this concat and merge all about? So I'll take, have a, uh, give an example of another fictional problem and let's try to apply these operators on that fictional problem. So this problem is called Snape's assignment. Professor Snape has requested all students to write an essay on werewolves. They uh, can write any essay, they have to write an essay and the students who will turn in the essay first will get more points than the ones submitting later. 
So uh, students are divided into four houses, Gryffindor, Slytherin, Hufflepuff, and Ravenclaw. So this is how the assignment submission is done. As you can see, the Gryffindor person is submitting the assignment first, then Slytherin, then Hufflepuff, and so on. So uh, there's a, a little uh, child, weird child, who want to like jinx this assignment evaluator and he wants to get the more points and he wants his house to win. That's called, he's called Draco. So he's going to apply a trick over it. He's going to concat these four observables. Let's get the observable of Slytherin, observable of Hufflepuff, Ravenclaw and Gryffindor and apply the concat spell over it. Draco applies the concat spell over it and this is how, what we'll get then. As you can see, we use the Slytherin observable first. So Slytherin is getting emitted first, then Hufflepuff, then Ravenclaw and Gryffindor is the last. So guess he's, who is not so pleased? Who was the one, first one to submit the assignment and now she's the last? Yes, Hermione is not so pleased by this. So she wants to make the thing, she wants to make the things right. Now she is going to use the merge spell instead on the assignment evaluator. And this is what is going to happen. As in when the uh, students will turn in the assignments, everything is going to be in order. G1, S1, H1. As in when the items is getting emitted, we are combining and merging those items. Let's look at a coding problem first. Uh, now, so the, uh, this is a classic problem. What we want to do is we want to hit the cache first to get the data. And if the data is found, we'll return the data and else we want to place a network call. So we, what we can do is we can apply the concatify spell easily on this problem. So here what we have is we'll get the lectures. Lectures is anything that we're fetching from the server or getting from the cache. So we'll uh, first get the lectures from cache. We have an observable. Get the lectures from server. We have another observable. And we can combine or concat these two. And what will happen is if the lectures are found in the cache, we will not be subscribing, that is, we will not be making any API call. And if uh, you were to do this uh, using, without RxJava, you would have to do a uh, little of conditional things and RxJava just uh, lets you use a, a single operator and maybe a two, maybe two operators and get this over with. So yeah, I have used another operator in this example, that is take one. So uh, one caveat here is when there is no data, for example, if there is no data from cache or from server, then take one will complete without exception. And otherwise, if we had used first, then we would have got no such element exception if there was no data. So that's why I've used take one over here. So next topic is the back pressure. That is the defense against the dark arts. Let's have a look at it. So what is back pressure, the term which many people use and we do not really know about. Back pressure is frequency, when the frequency of producer producing an item is more than the ability of consumer to consume. Technically, strategies for coping with observables that produces items more rapidly than the observer consuming them. Good news is, usually you do not even have to worry about back pressure in your application. RS Java 2 introduces Flowable, which is an observable with back pressure support. What you just need to do is forget about, uh, forget about flowable and use observable instead, and you do not have to worry about it at all. Observables do not support back pressure, while flowables do. And, uh, but it's still good to know about things because if in future, you, if you might have to like uh, take care of back pressure, then you should be knowing about it and how we should be dealing with the uh, different strategies to deal with back pressure. So let's have a look at another fictional problem, that is the battle. We have two armies, one is the good army, that is the Dumbledore's army, and another one is the Death Eaters, that is the bad army. Each team is fighting against the other team, and Dumbledore's army is not as experienced as, it, as the de Death Eaters. So the Death Eaters are emitting some spells and the Dumbledore's army, that is a good one, they are getting overwhelmed by those spells. So some kind of back pressure handling here is required because the frequency of producer is more than the ability of the consumer to consume. So 
So uh, let's take a look at uh, some of the operators which can be used in this case or the strategies. Even if we do not have to worry about back pressure, but still these operators, as you'll see, can come in handy in future. So first is the buffer operator. So what buffer does is, as the name suggests, it buffers small chunk of data and emit, uh, instead of emitting one item at a time, it emits buffer, I mean chunks of data. So technically, periodically gather items emitted by an observable into bundles and emit these bundles rather than emitting the items one at a time. So this is a simple example. This is, is an observable of pill which the bad army is producing and uh, here they are first spell, second spell, third spell and fourth spell. What we can do is we can apply the buff random spell over here that is as simple as buffer and the count and here these two spells will get buffered and uh, this will also get buffered. So uh, as I told you the Dumbledore's army was getting overwhelmed. So they, Harry decided to use this technique or this uh, kind of strategy to cope with the back pressure in that case. But as you can see, they still have to like process all the spells. So it is kind of a lossless kind of a strategy because they still have to uh, process all the items. So it's not going to work. So Sirius is not so happy about this strategy. So what he is going to do is he is going to instead apply the debound strategy. That is the debound C spell, debound operator. So what is debound operator? Debound operator from a list of items emitted. Uh, emit an item only when some time has passed since it last emitted anything. Only em uh, technically only emit an item from an observable if a particular time span has passed without it emitting another item. Let's see how it works. So here uh, the previous marble diagram of uh, spells, four spells. So uh, here we have, this is how we can apply the debounce operator. We'll take a time unit that is a 300 milliseconds. And how uh, this comes into picture is, since there 3 milliseconds had passed since something was emitted, so one gets emitted. Again 300 milliseconds had passed since anything got em emitted, so two gets emitted. Now 3 milliseconds had not passed and four got emitted. So it will skip the third one and it will instead emit four because again 3 seconds milliseconds. Uh, 300 milliseconds had passed without it emitting anything. So as you can see, this is a lossy kind of approach and it works out well in this case and the Dumbledore's army is happy now. Problem solved. So let's apply these strategies in some applications which are not really related to back pressure but uh, you do not have to like think about back pressure in these cases but these are kind of optimizations which you might want to do in your apps. For example, if you want to optimize network tra traffic, the use case here is you want to track user events whenever a person like user clicked here, user clicked there. With each and every event you want to send a server call. Simple approach of doing this will be server request whenever any event is occurring. So what will happen here is we'll have an over charty producer that, are, that is the user events and the slow consumer that is a network request. So some kind of back pressure handling is required over here. So even if you do not think about back pressure, you would still have to optimize this case. So what we can use, uh, uh, do is, uh, we can use the buffer random spell or the buffer operator over here. We can buffer some events before making a network request. But you, ha you would have to see if your tracking analytics API supports that kind of an operation and it can send a chunk of events instead of sending uh, one event at a time, it can send a list of events. So this is how we are going to do it. Do it. We are going to get an event so observable. We are going to if, uh, buffer three events at a time, and we are going to send a list instead of one item at a time. So uh, we won't be putting much load on the API or the server. So uh, next problem is the auto search problem. This is uh, the problem when we need to show some kind of autocomplete suggestions. So as you can see in this uh, thing is whenever a person is typing any character, we are placing a network call at each and every character. So this is not so like uh, optimized. This is a simple approach of doing things. Whenever any character is getting typed, place a network request, get the results and show it as a like autocomplete list. So what we can do instead is 
we can handle back pressure over here and use the debound C spell or the debounce operator over here. How we can do that is we can place the uh, time limit as 500 or whatever you want in milliseconds over here and uh, only after uh, 500 milliseconds had have, have passed then only the next character will be uh, placing a server call. So this is as simple as uh, writing a simple operator debounce and doing it. We do not have to really uh, implement it ourselves. So the next topic is error handling or the muggle art. So we have repetium spell over here, the repeat operator. What repeat is, as the name suggests, emit the same item multiple times, create an observable that emits a particular item multiple times. This is a simple example. We have an observable emitting one. We want to em uh, repeat this four times. We'll emit one, 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 one. This is uh, this is as simple as uh, using. Uh, this is we don't only have to use a single function and we'll be good. So next is the retricular spell or the retry operator. That is also some kind of task which takes some time out of and some, some of our, eat, we eat our brains uh, doing uh, synchronization and everything like that. What we can do is, so uh, on error we can retry the same task until it's successfully completed. So if a source observer emits an error, then we'll resubscribe to it in hopes that it will complete without error. So this is the marble diagram. What ha what's happening over here is we have a source which is emitting one, two, and three. What happened is when three was getting emitted, we got an error. So what we can do here is we can apply the retricular spell and resubscribe to this. So it will simply retry, and this time the stream got completed successfully. So the basic difference between these two, repeat and retry, is the re repeat of operator will resubscribe when it receives uncompleted because we are repeating something which had been successfully emitted and retry resubscribes when it receives on error. So let's look at a, a fictional problem that is called the Professor Lupin's Boggard. What it is about is we want to perform a ridiculous charm which is any operation. What we want to do is we want to perform it successfully then we want to excel at it. So a ridiculous charm, what is a ridiculous charm? It is a magical spell to turn a boggard, which is your worst fear. It, it, uh, we want to turn it into something funny. So the boggart, the fictional or magical object, it has three states, that is scary, funny, and hilarious. So we are emitting these boggart states. So we'll uh, call this ridiculous charm operation to have been successfully completed if the laughter threshold crosses the funny threshold, there is a funny threshold is a value. If our threshold crosses this value, uh, the spell is successful. And we're, we would have expelled, excelled the uh, ridiculous charm if the threshold crosses a hilarious value. Uh, something is funny when it makes you laugh, but something becomes hilarious when it is extremely funny. So to uh, state the problem, Boggart has three states, scary, funny, and hilarious. We want to uh, perform a ridiculous charm on Boggart. The state of Boggart will remain same if it doesn't cross funny threshold. It will change into funny if it crosses th funny threshold. It will change into hilarious if it crosses the hilarious threshold. So we need to retry until the Boggart state is at least funny. Then we need to repeat this task until Boggart becomes hilarious. So let's look at the marble diagram. This is the solution, like uh, firstly the scary state emitted and then uh, we applied the ridiculous charm or any uh, function over it and it failed. So what we can do is we can retry over here, resubscribe to it and this time we were able to perform the ridiculous charm successfully. The boggart state changed into funny and the operation got completed successfully. Now we want to repeat this thing as the operation has been successful, now we want to excel at it. And uh, fortunately, this time the boggart got converted into hilarious and our operation is successfully completed. This is the code for it. We'll get the boggart observable. We will apply our any function here. In this case, we are applying a ridiculous function over it. If the boggart is funny, we are uh, emitting the boggart. Otherwise, we are emitting the error. And 
if the pocket is not funny this will result into an error case and whenever any on error is triggered retry comes into picture so now what will happen is retry this will get retried and this whole thing if it gets successfully completed will repeat it 10 times and uh, i have used another operator over here take until so this thing will be repeated until our operation uh, the bogot gets hilarious so uh, enough about retry and repeat and this uh, fictional problems let's uh, take a coding uh, problem into picture so the problem is we want to keep the session alive while the user is browsing the app so how we can do a simple approach would be uh, checking for session validity before performing each and every api call you need to place if and if checks before placing any api call so the drawback is as i told you placing the session dot is valid check before each api call what you can do instead is renew the token repeatedly while the user is browsing the app and that can be done using our repeat operator so we'll apply the repetition spell over here we'll get the session observable that is Uh, we'll get the current session and we'll check if it is valid. This can be done using the filter operator I told you about. So we have one observ uh, one observable which is uh, checking the validity of session. We have another renew observable which is making the API call if our uh, if our expiry time of the session has occurred. if the if the uh, session has expired it is making the api call so we are, here we are using the repeat when operator which takes in a function and we can tell it when to retry so what we are going to do is now we have two observables we can simply concat it so if the if the session will be uh, found in the uh, cache it will return the session and if it is valid and otherwise it will just keep on retrying in the background uh, sorry repeating in the background and it will keep the session alive so next let's take a uh, take a look at the demo we have multiple api calls the problem i talked about earlier is it's uh, converted into a coding problem we are waiting for the flux feed api call to complete we are also waiting for the student api call to get the hair of crab crab here it is a like member variable of student class both calls are executing asynchronously the problem is we want to initialize polyjuice that is uh we want from the results of api calls that is flux feed and student want to create another object called polyjuice and we want to hide loader only after both calls have completed without our rx java we would have to use schema force like if flux feed call would complete we would have to check if student call had com has been completed or not and if the student response came first then we would have to check if flux feed response has yet come or not and that way uh, we would have to keep two booleans two states uh, that is uh, like states are not that good so let's take a look at the example so this is a simple demo that i created sorry for not using material design that much so we got crab here we got flux feed and we prepared the polyjuice as can, you can see let's see it again so this time we got flux feed first now we got crab here and we prepared the polyjuice so these kind of things are really uh, simplified by using our uh, rs java so this is a simple uh, code which i have uh, written uh, we are simply using the zip operator we getting the two observables and we are using zip operator on it to complete our task and so it's we're not stating we're not saving any booleans or anything the code is clean and we're happy so the, uh, we uh, this is the problem that, that we just saw so what's next after this i would suggest you guys should learn by practice make rs java your friend and not a foe because it has a lot of advantages lot of uh, places and it makes things uh, less error prone and makes your life easier there is a repository from kaushik gopal that has a lot of examples rx java android exam samples this is from where i got the motiva motivation to start working on rx java because it had many examples which uh, shows that uh, the uh, there are so many things that rx java can achieve 
And also, if you want to have a look at RX Java 2, there is another repository. Uh, sorry, I messed up the link. It is from Amit, Sh Amit Shekhar, and uh, it has examples on RX Java 2. And also, if you want to pull your hair out, take a look at, look at my score, source code of my demo app, because and also uh, you can go to the medium blog for more details i'd like to give some acknowledgments uh, vikas for pushing me into rs java because at, at first it was really overwhelming julian for suggesting me to uh, think about this topic ridesh for editing all my stuff and the droidcon team for bearing me with the rehearsals also the uh, i'll state the links over here lossy and lossness repeat and retry this is this has been taken from a, a very good blog from dan liu uh, which uh, has repeat repeat when and retry when difference between those two and these are some other definitions and the fragmented podcast is really good just have been taken from here and thank you now any questions Uh, is there a way to test it? Yeah, uh, just uh, I mentioned about test scheduler. So uh, what we can do is uh, using the test scheduler. Uh, otherwise, we have the main thread, main scheduler. We have the computation thread and I/O thread that are the background threads. What we can do is we can instead uh, use our uh, structure our apps in a manner that uh, use test scheduler instead instead of those two schedulers and what can we can happen is we can uh, like uh, call uh, tri uh, trigger events function um, on it and it will trigger and it helps us write a unit test so the problem that i was having is that i subscribe on a different thread and i listen back on the main thread and in my unit test i do i don't have the access to the android right yeah that is what uh, uh, okay. so, so you can use test scheduler uh, sure. for that Hi. How to handle the duplication of data in different streams? Like, is there any operator already uh, developed, or we have to manage the duplication of data? In Sir, what do you mean by duplication of data? I mean, For example, you discussed the uh, problem like uh, uh, using caching and uh, using uh, data from server API calls. Say, if I have uh, data in cache, say 10 records, I am displaying th those records in a list. And uh, and uh, in another stream, uh, from another stream, I'm getting data from API. So in that API hit, I, I get uh, updated data, say 10 plus 2 records. So now that stream is returning 12 records and cache has 10 records. So if I concatenate or merge, like in the example you uh, displayed, so that uh, concatenate or merge would return uh, uh, the combined data of both streams. So that would be the duplication of data, 10 plus 12 now. So how would you handle uh, that data? So uh, are you talking about synchronization of data, like duplicacy and didn't so get the problem? Really. Like? Sorry. Yeah. Like, uh, there are methods in RX Java, like uh, you said, like about retry, and uh, these are the methods there, and it's like, but there is also a method unique. Uh, if you use that observable dot cannot unique, hear you. Then you can, if you use the uh, observable dot unique and you pass those models, that observable model that contains duplicate data, it will filter out and give you a new model with unique data set. So there is a method in Rx Java 2. So you can use that. Yeah, it will compare all the, those two earlier models which you provide that. Or the list of what uh, the data which you which you provide, it will check like which are, which are the data which is repeating. No, no, no. That will that unique operator is there, like uh, observable dot unique. Uh, so there is one operator. I'm I'm not sure like it is unique or something. Even I have a question. Uh, yeah. Hi, Garima. Hello. Uh, uh, you said uh, you said about auto search via debounce. And uh, in auto search, like when I, I've, I'm started typing a uh, word apple, okay, uh, first I, I first I type a, then uh, p. The response for a came after uh, two seconds, and but the response for p came within a second. This might happen due to my the speed of server or the internet. 
So my question is here, like, is it uh, handled properly? Like, if P, uh, if A response is coming after the P, so will it be displayed in the UI or will that be no, Sometimes cancelled? it happens that the uh, other thing is replaced. So you need to take care of that. Uh, maybe in that case you can uh, use the concat map instead of the flat map and concat map takes care of order mm -hmm. so that might work out for you okay so like uh, it is not handled with rx properly like you would have to use another operator or any other kind of uh, technique mm -hmm. okay we'll run the code and we'll see like what the Sorry. result is we'll run the code and we'll see like what the code how it uh, works in real uh, examples okay thank you hey garikma Question here from Balkan. <laughs> All right. Uh, the question is. Oh, who is it? Here, here on the Balkan. Let's look up. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, the question is. Uh, let's say I have a lot of multiple upstreams and downstreams, right? So in between the streams, if some crashes happens or some error happens, so it fails down in my ultimate downstream and say, hey, it failed. So how do we debug that? Uh, what all tools you are used to debug the problem like this? So basically, what I'm asking is, what are the problems you have faced using Rx, and how did you solve that? Uh, we are like uh, one of the good practice to be able to debug this kind of thing is do not forget your own errors. And uh, recently, I was uh, reading uh, about a tool which can be helpful. I do not sorry, I do not remember the name. But yeah, if you properly declare your own error methods, uh, and also uh, Dan Liu suggests that. Uh, if like uh, he throws an exception like on error not implemented exception if your on error is implemented correctly uh, you'll be able to debug it like this is uh, we, we are not using any other tools that on error is our i mean i would say yeah on error is fine but uh, the question is let's say i have multiple upstreams right like five upstreams i have right which stream did it crash i wouldn't be knowing in on error on error will be generic right yeah uh, Sorry. Yeah, in on error, you'll get to know that a particular line. This is the particular line on which you are crashed. So you'll know this line is from that observable. You have different streams. You have different observables. So you'll get to know. Uh, hi. Yeah. Hey. Uh, I guess uh, Google has recently released a similar library named Agera. Similar yeah. to Rx, have you tried that? Sorry? Google has recently... Agera, what was it? It's similar to Rx, right? Have you tried that? Uh, I haven't tried it. I've just heard about it in one of the podcasts and don't know what you want to ask about it. <laughs> okay, thanks. It's like some similar thing than in some other manner. So. Yeah, is there any API limitations for Rx Java? API limitation as in? Is in backward compatibility? Oh, okay, that thing. API, as it is a different library, I do not think there is much, I do not remember the exact number. Okay. Uh, hi, Girma. Uh, so, my question is uh, Is Rx Java uh, faster than uh, writing the code in Android or uh, is it the same level? Uh, it would uh, depend upon what kind of operators you are writing. If you are using a lot of operators, I think it, it's not going okay. to be that good. Okay. And it's definitely cleaner code um, and faster would be mm. uh, dependent on your implementation. No, so, so is it uh, uh, directly interacts uh, with the JVM or it is a, I mean a layer over the Java? Rx Java is a layer over Java or it directly interacts with JVM and compiler? Uh, I do not have an answer to that question. Okay, no issue. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Karima. Thank you.